The Zambian government is committed to diversifying the economy from over-reliance on traditional outputs from the mining sector for employment, foreign exchange and income generation. This is reflected in various policies, legal and institutional frameworks that have been created to promote production and job creation in various sectors of the economy, including agriculture, fisheries and livestock. Government submitted a formal request to the World Bank for support towards its economic diversification agenda in November 2015. The bank responded in the affirmative in December 2015 and has since undertaken a number of missions together with the government in order to elaborate on the areas of focus for the support from the World Bank. A key intervention in these efforts to diversify the economy has been through the Zambia Agribusiness and Trade Project, which government is financing with a credit facility from the International Development Association, IDA, and International Bank for Reconstruction and Development, IBRD, of the World Bank. Government recognizes that agribusiness and trade offer an opportunity for economic diversification and job creation in Zambia with an impact on poverty reduction through more and better jobs, increased farm incomes, and increased productivity. The Ministry of Commerce, Trade, and Industry, on behalf of the government and working with other key ministries such as agriculture, fisheries, and livestock, has taken a leading role in the development of agribusiness and trade. ZTP speaks to high-level national objectives with regard to government's determination to attain the Vision 2030 and Sustainable Development Goals. The Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Commerce, Trade and Industry, Mushuma Mlenga, says the vision of the ministry is being implemented under ZATP. He adds that it is gratifying to see the money given by government being put to good use. The, the ministry's um, original vision, obviously, because if you look at the funding structure, you have the support provided by government, and you also have the counterpart fund, if I might call it that, which is provided by the cooperative, meaning the members actually contribute money towards the project. So basically what that does is that uh, when government was designing this project, they wanted ownership. They wanted the beneficiaries to own uh, the project. And that ownership comes through the money that they contribute. So what I'm seeing here is that I, that vision is actually working out perfectly because you have people who've contributed. So they have a stake in the project. They have a stake in whether the project succeeds or fails. If the project fails, it means they've lost money. It's not only government that loses money, but the project, also, the people also lose money. You can even see from the enthusiasm of the beneficiaries that they've really bought uh, into this project. They've bought into the concept, and that's the concept of ownership. And then ownership leading to value uh, for money. And I think the project pre uh, places premium on, on value for money. And that's what we are, we are seeing here. Value for money, uh, ownership of, of, of the project, and just the energy to, to get things done. But also building into value chains, our own local value chains, and then linking into the regional uh, value chain, and also the international value chain. What we have here is a, is a product that can do all that, a product that uh, links into our own value chains, into regional value chains and international uh, value chains. So for me, as the head of the Ministry of Commerce, Trade and Industry, I'm, I'm, I'm very gratified uh, with what I have seen so far. This is uh, a project that I'm visiting. I've visited other projects, similar uh, situation in the other projects. The Ministry of Commerce, Trade and Industry is responsible for the overall coordination and implementation of the ZATP. The project is coordinated and ministry level by the Department of Planning and Information. Paul Lopunga takes us through the conceptualization of the project. The conceptualization is really an interplay between several players. And at the time, the Ministry of Agriculture, the Cooperatives Department there, the Agribusiness Department there, as well as the Ministry of Commerce were key 
stakeholders and they gave inputs. Uh, I myself was at the Ministry of Finance and was coordinating the formulation of uh, project programs under the Department of Economic and Technical Cooperation. So over the period, uh, what has happened is uh, in considering the value chain uh, benefits or the added value to the uh, value chain of uh, agribusiness, what happened was we arrived at the conclusion that whilst as agriculture generates the products, it nonetheless has uh, a structure that would be able to hand over and give to the Ministry of Commerce to track right through from uh, bulking by cooperatives or even just enhancing the production by the small-scale peasant person uh, of whatever agricultural products they have uh, to a level where engagement um, by our institutions would enhance the value of what is produced. Let me put it differently. Here we are, we've got a peasant farmer in the rural uh, elements of say Petaoki and they may pr be producing groundnuts. Uh, what the project would seek to do is to strengthen uh, the production of groundnuts on the ground in terms of perhaps seed type, in terms of uh, uh, agronomy, uh, the elements that make maximum uh, quantities and quality uh, of the producer. And from there, how do you get others around that farmer to do the same thing? And so you collect together. Uh, following that, you of course need to ask yourselves, so what happens? Are we going to eat groundnuts for lunch, groundnuts for supper, groundnuts for breakfast? No, we then differentiate by adding value. So someone will make cooking oil, others will make ntuilo, others will still uh, use that to make seeds. So all of that together feeds into the value chain. The returns are different for the different groups. But even then you wouldn't have accessed the greater market because you need to package. And when you package, you allow it to have labeling, you allow it to have a certain standard, and it can fit onto our shelves of our various malls and shops, but it can also become an exportable product. The Zambia Agribusiness and Trade Project is a national project that aims to support all relevant actors of the economy across the country in the area of agribusiness. ZATP project manager Golden Makai takes us through the various components of the project which all have a specific purpose. The Zambia Agribusiness and Trade Project has three components and each of the three components has its own specific focus. The first component, which is uh, component one, is uh, building productive alliances in Zambia and is generally meant to help uh, cooperatives or farmer associations to improve their productivity and also link them to the market. Uh, under the same component, we have another uh, program, which is a sub-component, which is focusing on helping SMEs that are into agro-processing, obviously to be assisted with technical assistance and also matching grants. And then we have component two, which is meant to strengthen the capacity of the statutory bodies that are under the Ministry of Commerce, Trade and Industry. And the idea is to ensure that these uh, statutory bodies are capacitated so that they can ultimately help the farmers and the SMEs that the project is supporting under component one to ensure that the business environment in which they operate is fairly set up and also that the quality of their produce or products 
is well uh, done to ensure that it meets the local standards as well as the international standards. Mind you, um, produce that we have from our farmers and products that are being processed by the SMEs, they don't just need to end up in Zambia. They are meant to be exported as well, and that's how we help to grow the economy. So the S statutory bodies that are being assisted will help these farmers and SMEs to ensure that their quality of the quality of their product, produce and products that are being processed meets the required local and international standards. Yes, uh, we are working with the Zambia Bureau of Standards who are responsible for standard development and uh, monitoring. We are also working with the Zambia Compulsory Standards Agency who enforce the compulsory standards and then we are working with the, the Zambia Metrology Agency who are responsible for measurements. Of course you may be aware that uh, as a customer who is buying something from the market, you need to be assured that you are paying for value. When you go out to the market to buy, for instance, two liters of cooking oil, if it's written on the container that this is two liters, it must be the actual two liters that you are paying for, not anything less or more. And if it's more, it means whoever is selling is losing out. And if it's less, then the, whoever is buying is actually losing out. And then we are also working with the, Zan, uh, the uh, Business Regulatory uh, uh, Review Agency, which is responsible for ensuring that the playing field is level in terms of uh, the business requirements for, for all the uh, business entities that are, we have. Uh, we are also working with the CCPC. You know the issues of competition, consumer competition, very critical. Uh, there are a lot of cartels that we may find out there on the market. And uh, if our small scale farmers our SMEs who are into agro-processing are not protected from these cartels. Their businesses can eventually die out. Uh, we, we would like to support these uh, uh, statutory bodies in as much as we can to just ensure that once they are capacitated, our uh, farmers who are working as cooperatives the SMS that are into agro-processing are also assisted in terms of growing their businesses. Mr. Makai is confident that the project is on course to fulfilling its intended purpose and objectives despite facing a number of challenges. We could have faced a few challenges here and there. Uh, for instance, I think uh, we had a slow start when the project uh, was uh, 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 launched. But now I think we've picked up pace and uh, we are cruising to ensure that uh, we catch up and even do better. A simple description of the project's scope is that of growing the Zambian economy through agribusiness and trade. And this is achieved by helping farmer groups agribusinesses and relevant government agencies improve their competitiveness. Makai explains that a number of SMEs are eligible and have already began to receive support. I would like to state that um, the project is on course. Um, we so far have um, supported a number of cooperatives under Component 1. Uh, we are finance, so far we've financed uh, 21 uh, cooperatives who have received both technical assistance and matching grants. And the way the matching grants are structured is such that the project is giving out 70% of the sub-projects that the cooperatives come up with. And then they make a contribution of a minimum of 30% to the matching grant. And we've given out over six million uh, kwacha, and we've given out over 2.5 million US dollars 
to the cooperatives and uh, the SMEs that we are working with. And um, we are also just about to support about 18 SMEs who are into agro-processing who have been recommended to receive technical assistance and matching grants and the support in terms of uh, the finances is to a tune of about uh, 850,000 US dollars and uh, very soon, probably in a week or so, uh, these SMEs will be receiving this support from the project. So I'd like to state that we are on course. So far we have 33 uh, under component 1A that uh, are eligible, although out of the, those, only 21 so far have received support. The remaining 12 are actually in the process of um, uh, finalizing their business plan, um, uh, not, not business plans, implementation plans, which they will be able to use to um, implement their projects. So once they complete that process, they'll also be receiving the matching grants and the ongoing technical assistance from the project. Uh, for the SMEs that are into agro-processing, the 18 that have been recommended are also just in the process of uh, finalizing the matching grant agreements. And then we have another nine who are working on their investment plans, which will also be reviewed uh, not too long from now. And probably we could get maybe an 80% pass rate from those eight, and we'll have more numbers coming through for us to deal with. The ZATP's objectives in enhancing firm growth for farmer groups ties in closely with the work that the Ministry of Commerce, Trade and Industry is carrying out under the Department of Cooperatives. Through this department, 250 cooperatives in total have been targeted in Central, Copper Belt, Lusaka, Eastern and Southern provinces for the ZATP to work with. Director of Cooperatives Shadrach Mungalaba explains the different classifications of cooperatives in the country. The, the classification that we are putting together as a department of cooperatives is, is a performance related uh, uh, classification. In 2012 we did a survey which um, uh, brought us, uh, you know, to understand that 2% of the cooperatives that we found alive at different levels in Zambia were successful. The next uh, lot of them, about 20-30% were enterprising and then we found that most of them were, were defunct. So the enterprising ones were at different levels. So up to now that's what we, in fact I must say that uh, uh, currently in uh, 20, 2019 and part of 2020 we are in the field doing the survey for 2020 so that we could uh, understand what we found out in 2012. So it's successful, enterprising and defunct ones. Farmer groups and cooperatives who have bankable business plans can apply to ZATP and are eligible to receive funds and support of up to 70% of their business costs in form of matching grants, business development and technical support. The competitive advantage lies in how innovative and diversified the business proposal is because the project also intends to promote agricultural diversification. Mungalaba explains that so far over 30 business plans have been approved. As we stand now, I am aware that over 30 of these business plans have now been, um, uh, been, uh, been approved and we are hoping to see from 2020 going forward, more and more producer organizations accessing the support uh, that uh, uh, ZATIP, uh, Zambia Agribusiness and Trade Project is giving to these uh, producer groups and helping them to produce better quality and, and also we are hoping that now they can move to the market linkages part of it so that they begin to access the market both locally and, uh, and, uh, and abroad. Technical Service Providers TSP team leader Dr. Baba Niber Tieto explains that the project seeks to build productive alliances between primary producers and end buyers. The role of the TSP is to provide technical and business management support to the producer groups receiving funding from the project. You recall the 
main objectives of the Zambia Agribusiness and Trade Project is to create opportunities for smallholder producers uh, to make the best out of their sweat. Uh, you recognize that uh, many producers in this country uh, are operating under very, very weak systems. Their production systems are not to the best. Uh, they have possibilities of accessing good markets, but they do not have that possibilities because of three main things. That they lack scale that is needed by the markets. Every market, every very good market, wants people who produce at scale. Okay. They are also not very trustworthy because they will not produce at the time that they are required to do. And quality issues begin to crop up. And these three factors are what separates the small poor producers from commercial farmers who are reaping the benefits of the markets. Okay. So you also recognize that one very important factor that's needed in ensuring that small producers make benefit out of their sweat is to have the requisite capital to invest in infrastructure and invest in capacity building. Now Zeta offers them opportunities in getting the requisite finances to build the necessary market induced or market related infrastructure that is needed. And in addition to that, they provide them with the necessary skills and technical capacities to utilize the grants that are getting most profitably. And that is where the TSP comes in. The responsibility of the TSP is to ensure that farmers, producers who get these grants are able to apply the grants in a way that will bring out the envisaged profits. And that helps them to access serious markets where they can actually market their produce and where they can be trusted and once they are given the trust they can actually export their produce and get more dividends out of their work. That is the responsibility of the TSP. In addition, the TSP nurtures a sustainable business relationship between the buyers and the producers. The TSP pursues their input principally through coaching, mentorship and training when needed through its qualified team of experts. In my team, I have myself, of course, as a team leader, we have a market access specialist. And as I mentioned, accessing markets has always been a challenge to small producers. So we have a specialist who helps the farmers and the producers to access friendly markets, markets that are very, very open to small-scale farmers and markets that give them good produce. We also have an agribusiness specialist. The responsibility of the agribusiness specialist to, is to ensure that the project models that are proposed by the producers are up to scratch and are in the, those ones that are required in the markets. In addition to that, we have a trading and capacity building officer. His responsibility is to ensure that we bring the requisite skills that are needed by the producer organizations to scratch. And we do, although it's called a training officer, we downgrading training actually. We only train when it is needed. Actually, there are two main strategies that we need, we are going to use coaching and mentoring. Coaching basically to be done by us and the government extension officers and other partners. Mentorship to be provided by people who have requisite experience in that work. That means some commercial farmers will be recruited to be mentors. Last but not the least, we have our financial advisor. His work is to ensure that the farmers have other accesses to finances and to also make sure that they have the requisite financial skills to manage the grant and manage what, whatever resources they get in a very transparent manner that will bring about probity and accountability and more importantly translating the grant into profits. In an effort to provide tailored technical assistance to entrepreneurs that will enable them to improve the quality and quantity of their products to ensure that they're meeting buyer requirements, Market Connect was onboarded successfully under the project in April 2019. Marker Connect is an advisory, brokerage and financial support service provided by the Zambia Agribusiness and Trade Project. 
Dunia Mpeso is Market Connect's team leader and explains that Market Connect is working with agro-processors by helping them add value to their products. Market Connect is the supplier development program, which is a component within the Zambia Agribusiness and Trade Project. We are focused on working with SMEs uh, that are in agri-processing. So an SME that is taking agricultural products, taking them through a manufacturing process, adding value, and where we come in is we are supporting them in getting their product and their business to a level where they are able to sell to local and hopefully eventually regional and international buyers. So the support that is required in getting them to that stage is multifaceted and within that we then have a team that will work with the SMEs that we put under the program to address those specific areas of their business, their processing and whatever area we find we need to be able to work with them on. And what that entails, or rather for us to be able to provide the right support to the, right, to the SME, is we need to have a very deep understanding of where they are now what are they producing, how are they producing it, where are they producing, and who are they currently buying to. This is done through a very detailed analysis process. We take them through their financials, their operations, their team building, their team composition, their strategy as a business, how are they marketing, and who are they selling to. The result of all of that data that is collected for each SME is then we develop a plan. So it's very tailored to the SME. And this is one of the most exciting things about this program. It's not a one-size-fits-all. It's a very much custom-built, custom-tailored. So for every single SME that we're working with, we're not doing exactly the same thing. We might be doing something similar, but how we're doing it is very different. Why? Because it depends on what they're producing. It depends on how are they producing it. Two peanut butter manufacturers might have a completely different processing uh, method. So we have to work within that. The end game and what we tell all of our SMEs is that growth is the name of the game. So ultimately what we want to do as Market Connect is grow these SMEs that we're working with. And growth again depends on various factors, which is where we would then come in and be supporting them on a daily basis. Market Connect has developed a specific growth plan for SMEs it is working with. It aims to promote the sustainable integration of agribusiness SMEs into value chains with established end markets and large buyers by supporting their ability to invest in productivity. Once they are taken onto the program, we are then working very closely with them. Most of our SMEs, we talk to them on a daily basis. If there is something that is happening at that particular moment, our preference is that we have an understanding of that so that we can guide them. If it's a problem, let it be resolved. If it's resources that they need, we will channel them to the right resources. If it's skills that they need, we help them find the skills that they need. Market Connect targets to work with 350 SMEs. Mupeso shares the basic prerequisites for an SME to be a potential beneficiary. So when we're selecting, as I said, we have to select the right SMEs, but there is, it's a process. So at the start of that process, we are looking at certain key areas of the SME. We're looking at their revenue, we're looking at their operations, we're looking at how long they've been registered, and we're also looking at the product. You know, is it a product that is ready to sell? Or is it a product that is still at startup phase? Is it a product that is already in the market? Or is it a product that is just about to go into the market? So when we're doing that analysis of the business, those are the areas that we're looking at. One of the other things that we're looking at now is are the, are the SMEs, should they come onto the program, are they willing to participate in what we're calling a success sharing scheme? So as I mentioned under BLF, we are providing grants, matching grants. Now, these are grants where the SMEs will not pay interest, but what we are looking at is them paying a component of what they will earn in the increase in their turnover once 
we have invested in them under the business linkages fund. So that's the one that we're calling the success sharing fee. So for example, if an SME is earning 200,000 today and with BLF, they are now doubling up from 200,000 to 400,000, then we will have a discussion with them to say, should we bring you to the stage of 400,000? Would you be willing to pay a percentage of the 200,000 growth that we have helped you achieve to pay a percentage of that as a fee that will go into a pool that is meant to then ensure that this program extends uh, beyond the initial period and becomes a self-sustainable program. The idea is that the SMEs can then begin to empower each other. You know, so the one that has been helped pays a little fee that is then used to help another SME that will be onboarded at a later stage. So those are the main areas that we would look at. If an SME is willing to do that and they have the product, they are within our turnover range, they are registered and they are operational, then we can progress them to the next step. But it is a detailed selection process because we have to make sure we identify the opportunity, we know what we are going to do with that SME so that we can achieve the growth that we are aiming for. The development objective of the Zambia Agribusiness and Trade Project for Zambia is to contribute to increased private sector investments, market linkages, firm growth and employment in agribusiness. Senior Agribusiness Specialist Wilfred Mufwambi explains how the project identified the SMEs that are currently receiving technical and investment support. All right, uh, thank you so much. I think you remember during the boot camp, we had 10 finalists that went through to the final, but obviously for the purpose of this program, we had looked at a number of 20 of them as part of uh, our initial stage of assessing SMEs that could actually be supported through the project. As we speak right now, we have reached 88 SMEs that we have been able to engage. And the six of those are actively on the program. They have been able, they have made it to actually receive technical support. And some of them are going into investment support. So basically, what has happened through this process is that um, how have we reached 88? We have had events, okay? For example, we've had networking activities that have been uh, initiated by the project, looking at how can we identify the right SMEs. You will note that everyone wants resources, everyone wants investment, but this program is very particular. It's focusing on high growth SMEs, and these are focused in agribusiness, and we're looking at those that are in processing, that are adding value. They're... He further enlightens us on why the project has targeted high growth SMEs. It is not easy to find high growth SMEs that have resolved to grow. What we are looking for is not people who want money. We want those who want to grow. Our idea is about growth. If you are not interested in growth, you don't need that money. Because the idea is that if you want growth, then you need investment capital to actually grow. And we do also realize the cost of investment is very high now. This program comes in to actually support SMEs that are struggling to actually grow, but they have a right product, but they are struggling to increase, for example, their processing capacity. They are struggling, for example, to access the right markets, but they have a product that has value and that can add value to the market at large. So the various ways in which we aim to communicate about the different facets of the Zambia Agribusiness and Trade Project, as you may or may not know, we have different stakeholders in our different components under the project and under the auspices of the Ministry of Commerce, Trade and Industry with support from the World Bank of course. We are in a delicate position of balance where we have to please each and every stakeholder while at the same time sticking to what we are created for. So on the one hand you have the cooperative groups to respond to our call for proposals and submit their applications for the potential benefits that are underlaid in the project. And on the other hand, we have the SMEs who under Market Connect also have a plethora of criteria where they can also benefit. So that presents a challenge in making sure that the information that we send out there is not blanket information, but is very, very specific to the different classifications of stakeholders. You may not know this as well, but we also are under component two, support statutory bodies in their undertakings that involve agri-business projects or agri-businesses out there. And so it's a very, very challenging and a very exciting 
uh, position to make sure that we condense the correct information, package it accordingly, and make sure that it gets out there to the right stakeholders at the right time. Meanwhile, the project also has various key stakeholders who have been identified and brought on board to help achieve the objectives of the project. The Business Regulatory Review Agency, BRA, is mandated to review and approve proposed policies and laws that affect business activities to ensure that they are legitimate and serve the intended purpose, as well as coordinate development and implementation of appropriate government-to-business interventions aimed at reducing the regulatory burden on businesses. BRA Executive Director Sharon Chilongo narrates their role in the ZATP project. In this project, basically, the, the objective in relation to BRRA was to strengthen the internal capacity of BRRA in, in, in terms of uh, reviewing regulatory impact assessment reports. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the other objective was uh, to ensure that we are capacitated in terms of us being able to sensitize the public, and particularly the public bodies, regulatory agencies, in terms of the provisions of the Business uh, Regulatory Act. So we have done, uh, like I mentioned, we did sensitization for all the local authorities yes. to make them understand the Business Regulatory Act. That was done through funding uh, under the, the Zambia Agri Business and Trade Project. And even the, the, the capacity building that we did last year uh, to um, allow the regulatory agencies, we did, we invited about 30 of them last year right. to understand what RIA is and to, to give them the skills to be able to undertake the RIA. The Zambia Bureau of Standards, ZABS, is another significant stakeholder working with ZATP. As a case in point, ZATP has so far provided support to ZABS to enable the agency build capacity to assist SMEs with their compliance and certification efforts in a cost-effective and time-efficient manner. Margaret Lungu is ZAB's Director of Technical Services and explains how the Zambia Bureau of Standards and the Zambia Agribusiness and Trade Project are working together in assisting SMEs. The ZATP project I think came as um, a good blessing for ZAPS because it, it came at a time when it came to also I think help us reinforce the operations of the newly established organizations like the new ZAPS and the, the other two new institutions and um, we've been focusing on um, assisting them SMEs, MSMEs um, and of course enhancing the operations of Zambia Bureau of Standards. So we, we've gotten support to undertake some needs assessments. Lungu reveals that ZABS has undertaken a needs assessment in five provinces and shares some of their key findings. Uh, we've been working in five, five provinces. Yes, uh, Central, Copper Belt, Eastern Osaka, and Southern provinces. Yeah, so with ZATP support, we managed to undertake those assessments, and uh, there are some key findings which I can talk about. Yeah, well, from our assessments. First of all, some of those SMEs are registered. They have registered businesses, which is a good thing, I think. But we still found that a good number of them have not registered their businesses. So as you know, if your business is not registered, sometimes it's very difficult to access some of these uh, benefits, say loans from a bank and things like that. So it's important that SMEs also, or anyone who starts a business, they, they formalize it and register it. Yeah, And it's also difficult even for an institution as ZABS to assist such institution because so we also need to have the to have them registered so we can make better follow-ups when we are assisting them with the, the function that we or the services that we provide. Added to these assessments, ZAPS has also developed 10 training modules and has since trained 65 participants in different towns. 
So they don't, they do not document how they carry out their processes. So that if a, the one who knows the business is not there, then that business will not move forward because the one who knows how to carry out activities is not there and the, there's no reference to that. And this is one of the things that we actually uh, certify, say in management systems, we, we require that uh, a company, an industry, an organization document what they do so that it's easy for, for a new person, a new staff, to actually read and follow the instructions as documented. You know, that helps with the consistency in service provision. An overarching strategy to tackle anti-competitive practices and improve the quality of market regulations along agribusiness value chains is necessary to provide an environment where sustainable investment can take place. Stronger institutional capacity to regulate markets properly could help eliminate or constrain government interventions that distort market signals and affect sustainable sector growth. This includes support to the Competition Agency in Zambia, the Competition and Consumer Protection Commission, CCPC, in order to continue to identify and address competition issues in key markets and to also integrate competition principles in the assessment of laws and regulations in relevant sectors. Chilufia Sampa enlightens us on the collaboration of ZATP and CCPC. The agribusiness uh, project basically supported the CCPC in carrying out uh, about four studies in um, various agricultural uh, sectors. One uh, study was on sugar, one was on cotton, the other one was on uh, agricultural inputs, and uh, the last one was what we, we would call the legal infrastructure. But then the legal infrastructure is basically uh, concerned on the agribusiness uh, sector. And um, I must say the, the pro program went very well. Um, we've come out with some specific recommendations for various stakeholders uh, which we have given to the government and other stakeholders. Sampa also highlights that the CCPC has an agricultural office with officers working full-time and this was facilitated through ZATP support. He explains how this project has built capacity within the CCPC. So, so that project was such that it was building capacity within the CCPC and as it was building capacity um, we have assimilated the members of staff that were working for the agribusiness and now they've become part and parcel of the CCPC team and uh, have been put in the various departments some have remained in the research so that they can continue uh, uh, researching not necessarily in agribusiness but even in other areas while others have been incorporated in the other departments of the Commission. So we have basically boosted us with six new members of staff. Sampa further elaborates the ultimate benefit of such research. It will run. Um, it won't be called agribusiness, it will be called a research unit. And, uh, but you see the, the, um, the capacity that has been built uh, will allow us to go into agribusiness, uh, other sectors of the agri agricultural sector. It will allow us to go into other areas, not necessarily uh, agribusiness, but uh, because the capacity has been built, it will allow us to go into all this research that we can do. So this is what the project has done for the Commission. Beneficiaries of ZATP are SMEs in the agribusiness sector, as well as producer organizations such as cooperatives or other farmer groups. In order to reach the targeted audience, the project has undertaken various outreach programs in various districts, including pitching events where different cooperatives have participated. Kalukungu Cooperative is a cooperative based on the Copper Belt in Mpongwe district. Humphrey Chubundi is the cooperative chairperson and narrates how the funding they received helped them and how the selection of participants of the project is transparent. He is elated with the benefits and advises other cooperatives to apply. So, to the total sana, 
ukufuma kuchiputuru watienu Nkuruji njine kuteko Pakutupere mpia Ishisha furefi 95,000 plus Ifu tu watotera sana Bigozi Hapa kubulai mwene kuteko kubumbela kwa mpia Na cooperative, na wine inspector wezo muna mpongi Na tapari if it feels a fetu chitiri So if we, nde chita apiu kuli mumu machia mani yawa nangi mwa isa pano Kwa wati, chite ni apply, nga waita Aiko no kutina Mufu hile mwale mba Paka mipokele la waini Echo warefu woku bomba Taba bomba ne muntu umo, bomba ne mako paretiri Buya ntanshu bubu haisa kuna uka rukungu cooperative. Grace Katala is another member of the recipient cooperative and is delighted about the benefits that ZATP is offering. Tuatotela, wako tuletela kwa mabranza ye ingi, hako ya wati tuishi ve, uwikalo wa muno mu, mu mishi, na uya ntanshu wa muno mu mishi. Tuatotela mkwae. Under the ZATP project, Monza Dairy Farmers Cooperative Society in Southern Province received 86 dairy cows to give out to farmers aimed at increasing milk production. Minister of Commerce, Trade and Industry Christopher Yaluma was in the district recently to officially hand over the cattle. As you are aware, through the Zambia Agribusiness and Trade Project, my minister has been empowering farmers farmer groups and SMEs that have exhibited willingness to progress through submission of winning proposals and business plans in the various value chains. Kalukungu Cooperative and Monze Dairy Farmers Cooperative are not the only cooperatives that have benefited from ZATP. A check handover ceremony was recently held in Lusaka in which different farmer groups and SMEs received various amounts of support. And their value chain is headed for oils, receiving The agribusiness sector is an important driver of diversified and inclusive economic growth in Zambia. And to reach their full growth potential, agro-based businesses need access to know-how and market linkages. Through the ZATP, the government is ensuring that this objective is continually met in the initial target areas of Lusaka, Copper Belt, Southern, Central and Eastern Province. Thank you.